Hello again, this is Barbara from Barbara's Kitchen. This time, instead of South Carolina, I've actually come to Edmond, Oklahoma to visit my sister Donna so that she can share her fabulous homemade chicken and dumplings. Hello, I am glad that Barbara's here with me. Uh, it is fall time, and one of the favorite things that my sons always love are the chicken and dumplings. So I wanted to share with you basically a very easy recipe. Um, I always start out with rotisserie chicken. I use um, self-rising flour. I put parsley in it, and I always make my own chicken stock with granules, not the cubes. So that is an important thing too. Okay, Donna, let's get going. Tell okay. me how you do this. Well, the first thing I do is, you know, I use a rotisserie chicken. So I have deboned the chicken, and you want to do that first because the chicken will be the very last thing I put in. I use this brand of broth. I get it at Sam's. Uh, it's a granule. It's not a cube. It's really, really rich in flavor. So I don't measure either. I never have. I do by taste. So as I have poured some in, you can see it'll bubble up, but you can start seeing the richness of it. The more you need, it gets really, really, it'll start turning darker. It's really hot or I would taste it, but I've done this enough that I can look at the color of it and know that that's a, that would be good right there. So as I'm going to let this boil, you always want your broth to get really, really hot and boil before you put your dumpling in. So I'll let that get hot as it begins to boil and then I'll come over here and I will start making my dumplings. I use approximately four cups of self-rising flour. Uh, your dumplings are going to be made small and I have started using parsley because it has a really pretty flavor. I mean, uh, it has a small flavor, but it looks pretty in the dumpling as you're eating it instead of just a white dumpling. You mm -hmm. see that little bit of green, and I like it. Oh yeah, I don't know. So that's what I use. For my liquid, I use the chicken broth. Instead of just water or milk, I have found mm -hmm. that using chicken broth also makes mm -hmm. the dumpling flavorful. Wow, that's a good idea. So again, depending on, I'll probably need more water, but I'm gonna, you make, you don't wanna use the hot broth in this because it will clump up. So you do need to use cold water with the broth and I just stir it, get it mixed up that way. And then you can pour this broth into your four cups of self-rising flour and you just pour it all. Hmm. You want the consistency of this dough to not be dry, but to not be wet either. Mm -hmm. You want it just barely moist. So you just stir, mix that all up. I probably had two cups of broth mm -hmm. wow. to four cups of flour. Mm -hmm. If it's too dry, add a little bit more broth. If it's too doughy, just throw in some more flour. Wow. I know Donna has always made these dumplings, and even though I got part of her recipe, I would just use uh, biscuits or something like that. But today, I really want to get this down because they, it is wonderful. Okay, I've mixed the dough together. I'm going to use my parsley. I have a little shaker. I just shake it on top mm -hmm. of it like that. It looks really pretty. Mm -hmm. And just mm -hmm. gently fold it in your dough. My dough has mm -hmm. already, because it's self-rising, you'll see mm -hmm. the it's kind of puffy. So you're gonna get light and fluffy dumplings and not hard ones. So this is mm -hmm. ready. I've got mm -hmm. my spoon and I'm gonna show you how mm -hmm. big of a dumpling you have in order for it to be perfect. All now, right. I'm gonna come over here. Um, I told you earlier about the broth. You definitely want it to be boiling. You don't want it to be simmering because as you drop a dumpling, I have a tablespoon. I use about a fourth of the tablespoon. You don't want a bigger piece of dough than that because it will fluff up when it hits the water. So if you want to come over, I'm going to show you how it fluff, it picks up. You can see the boiling broth. I'm going to drop, uh-oh. 
drop one duckling in. The more I put in the pan, at some point I'll start pushing down the dumplings. They'll start floating to the top and you wanna push them down the more you put in. Okay, while Donna is getting the dumplings and putting in, I wanted to make some cornbread. You gotta have cornbreads with chicken and dumplings. So she uses, I'm gonna follow her recipe, she uses the Shawnee Vest, which is a a cornmeal corn mix. It already has the self-rising everything in it. And you just simply follow the recipe for cornbread, okay? So what I've done, I've already put the ingredients in, in the bowl, and what she does, I'm gonna use her secret ingredient, is bacon drippings because it calls for oil so she uses this and also can you see my skillet she's just gonna make a little pan but it would make a bigger pan but we're getting this grit this bacon drippings hot then hot Donna do I pour yeah it? after that you're gonna we're gonna use the bacon drippings for the oil that's gonna go in there also so there's a hot holder Margaret but this will be hot Go ahead and just pour some in there, which okay. is approximately, I think it says, a fourth of a cup. Okay, so this is hot, uh, melted bacon drippings that she keeps when she does her bacon. She just puts it in a bowl and keeps it for recipes. So she said basically it's a fourth of a cup, but there again, she doesn't measure, so I'm going to do it like she does. <laughs> just pour yes. some in, about like that. Yeah. And use the rest in the pan. So you use the rest, you keep in the pan that we're going to pour the batter in. This is another secret. Okay. And on, I've, I've already got my, everything it called for. It called for milk and egg. And that was her secret to put the bacon drippings. This is mine. I love jalapeno. It's mild. So I've chopped up, if you like it, a little bit of jalapeno that I'm gonna put in. Put it in real quickly. <laughs> and, and we like cheddar cheese also in with it. So I'm gonna dump like a, a, almost a cup, not quite, of cheddar cheese and the jalapenos. Okay, Donna, do I okay. just pour you this? Go ahead and get that back on your stove. I mean, on your. And we, I always use an iron skillet because it's just fun to make cornbread in. You always get a really crispy bottom. I'll put it on the fire. I get it hot, and I pour my batter into the iron skillet on top of the cook stove. Then we put it in the oven. Okay, here I go. We're gonna, do you think that's hot enough? Yeah. The oil? Yeah. Go ahead and do so, it. So, you can hear it. You hear a tiny little bit of sizzle, I guess. And just, how much, Don? More than that. More than Go this. ahead and, yeah. I'll fill it almost to the... Well, yeah, that right there. Okay, just yeah. that. And you can, you can see all of the, uh, you see that bacon. So that's, a, that bacon dripping. Is that okay like that, yes. Donna? Yeah. That's how you do it? Yeah. Wow, yeah. okay. With a preheated oven of 400. 400. Okay, I have my cornbread in that oven of 400, and I think it calls for 35 minutes. So while it is baking, Donna's going to put in the last ingredient, which is the deboned rotisserie chicken. Okay. Uh, I think where we left off last, I've spooned in half of my flour. So as I said, you always look at the liquid that you have to the ratio of the dumpling. Because you have a lot of dumpling doesn't mean you put it all in the water. If you want to come over, you can kind of see. I probably have 150 dumplings, maybe 100 in the water, but I like the consistency of broth and not full of dumpling and no broth. But you can see the consistency as you stir and stir, and you have to stir or you will burn the bottom. The whole time you're dropping the dumpling, you always stir the bottom. And it makes its own gravy. As you can see, it'll be very thick with the dumpling. And you'll know the dumplings are cooked because they will fall. 
while they're cooking, they'll be on top, and that's why you keep pushing them down, pushing them down as you add a dumpling. And then at the end, I also turn my fire down. You can be on a simmer. The dumplings are dropping, and that means they are cooked. And that's when you can have it. After they're fully cooked, I dash it with pepper on top. And then I put my chicken. I've already deboned it. It's a lot of big pieces. I don't like real big pieces. So again, you just start tearing pieces apart to the size that you want and you drop them into the pan. You don't cook the chicken. After that, you turn the fire out and then you just let it set. You want to move in on that so you can see what the chicken looks like as she drops yeah, it in. As I'm picking it apart, it just drops in. Like I said, a lot of this is all the right size. You get your dark and your white meats so that you get all flavors of the chicken. Plus the rotisserie chicken, really, I get that at Sam's too normally, is very, very flavorful. All right, as you can see, the cornbread is ready. Delicious, the dumplings and chicken smell. We haven't tasted it. It smells wonderful, looks wonderful. And before we start this, um, always want to put in a food for thought, something to feed our souls as well. So Donna, do you have something to share? I do. Um, I had told Barbara that something that has been on my heart lately that I believe the Lord is showing me and probably a number of people is the busyness of life and mm -hmm. what happens mm -hmm. when we get so busy that literally, for one thing, we get further away from the Lord because mm -hmm. of busyness. And I have shared with her that even through my cooking mm -hmm. of being hospitable with neighbors and whatever, mm -hmm. that if I can slow down my life, and I don't work, but I find that I'm busy every day, mm -hmm. that coming mm -hmm. in the kitchen, cooking with the mindfulness of thankfulness, mm -hmm. but also sharing what I cook with people in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. that that yes. also is a thing of thinking of others and not just what I need to do today, because it's not all about me. Mm -hmm. That I feel that if we can slow down, mm -hmm. rest, do leisure stuff, and it's always wonderful. Mm -hmm. As we know, the mm -hmm. Lord ate with his disciples. Yes. That there's many mm -hmm. scriptures in the yes. Bible that talks about them mm -hmm. coming together and eating at a table. Breaking bread together. Yes. So that's kind of what I shared with her, that I want to slow down mm -hmm. and really enjoy life and spend time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And there's no better place than even having people over for dinner. Yes, absolutely. So having said yeah. that, let's yes. loop out this, this beautiful cornbread. All right. You can zoom in and you can see the oh, cheese. There we go. You can see the jalapeno. we got to slather it with butter. There mm -hmm. we go, Donna. Let's get that butter. Mm -hmm. So this uh -huh. is what we do. This is what we love. And you know, when we were younger, we grew up with cornbread. Mother loved cornbread. Mm -hmm. So cornbread we had with beans and cornbread, mm -hmm. cornbread with dumplings. I make cornbread, fried potatoes and cornbread. Soup, so, soup yep. with the fall coming. Soup, cornbread, dumplings, cornbread. It's right in time for fall. Yes. And having said that, be blessed and Happy fall, y'all. Yes. Hey, you got a taste of this. One more scoop is like, wow, Donna. <laughs> mm. It is good. Mm. Very, very good. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Wonderful.